hours from one employee to another. Donating sick leave hours. And if you read in the handbook, it says any employee may donate any portion of their accumulated sick leave to another employee as approved on a case-by-case -case basis by the Cheyenne County Board of Commissioners. And we got a request this morning. Motion to go ahead and approve this transfer of sick leave hours. I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. is my clerk's meeting, mandatory meeting in Wichita. And then May 16th, there's a budget workshop in Colby put on by, uh, I think it's KDOR, Kansas Department of Revenue, I believe. Is that open to commissioners too? Yeah. When is that? It's uh, May 16th. $60. I think it's a, it's just a day long meeting. Yeah. I wouldn't mind attending that. Okay. And then May 17th, I have a transportation meeting in Plainville. Um, you're supposed to make every other meeting in person, but they said it's not mandatory. But this meeting, they said that all coordinators should attend. Well, it sounds like all things you need to go to keep on top of well, what's wish, going on. I wish they would have done it with Colby at the last one. <laughs> yeah. Do I, have to, do I have to apply to go to that one at Colby? Or? Um, yeah, it's like $60. $60. Um, I will get on there and get you something. All right, thank you. And also the cookies outside were donated, and we have a thank you here from, uh, it says, Commissioners, thanks for your service to our county. We are praying for your decisions that they, as they affect all of us, and it's from the Solid Rock Baptist Church, so I have a thank you and some cookies from them. If you want to, we can jump ahead because I can cover the next topic, the Strategic Planning Committee. I wasn't able to attend that first meeting, that Strategic Planning meeting. Both of you went, did you not? And then the next one was, uh, I think they termed it the Strategic Doing Meeting. Well, anyway, I wound up on a committee that basically how this worked is of all the ideas that came out of the first meeting, they broke out into groups and everybody discussed how to come up with pop possible solutions or changes to whatever was pertinent to that committee. Well, one of the one of the things that was brought up was the possibility of, of the county and the, the original idea was hire somebody that could oversee the county and cities basic operations, a manager, more or less. That way there wouldn't be any... They talked about duplication of services and all kinds of things, which I don't think we have. But anyway, that involved into looking into maybe in a county administrator or a county controller or a county counselor. We had a meeting the other night, and I, and I kind of... Uh, went through and I found the statutes that pertain to the administrator and controller of counties. The administrator, we really, we, we wouldn't have any need for. That is actually an elected position. 
you'd have to make a resolution, then take that resolution before the voters to see if they would give approval to hire an administrator. I don't think, and after reading the duties of an administrator, that's nothing that would benefit us. I mean, we already have people in place, namely the clerk's office, that takes care of the majority of, of what that. So then we looked at a controller position. There's also a position within the statute for a county controller, and it's, it's an appointment by the, the Board of Commissioners. And again, they do the same basic services that the clerk's office is already offering. But the one thing that did come out of all this was that, uh, let me see, uh, Rod Klepper, He's also part of this committee. He went ahead and contacted this KAC, which is the Kansas Association of Counties, and he had a discussion with Randy Allen. I think we both talked to him. Did anyway? He works for the Kansas Association of Counties, and Rod asked him a lot of questions. The same thing about administrator, a counselor, a, a controller, and this Randy Allen's recommendation was why don't you have us come out and take a look at your operation and we can maybe evaluate based on comparison with other counties where you're at, what you need and what you don't need. And that idea kind of made sense to me. Um, no commitments, just come out and see what we're doing and see if we're doing it right. So if you would like to pursue this further, I'll go ahead and make the call to this Randy Allen and find out some details on how that actually would benefit us, or if it would be a benefit. Well, I think that's the bottom line, is it going to benefit us? Well, since it's we got to find out. Instead of jumping into the plan about... I mean, we don't want to pay somebody that's going to sudden do nothing. Right, and if, if we've already had all those jobs or those duties that they're already filled, why would we look for a, another, an additional? But anyway, I did kind of like the idea of, of having the KAC at least come out and say, hey, you look a little weak here, you look pretty strong here. I didn't think there'd be, you know, too much harm in doing that. Have you ever considered a, a counselor position? Have you read the statute about a counselor? No, I haven't. Yeah. It would sure relieve you of a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> After reading through all that, my head kind of hurt, but uh, anyway, that is what that strategic planning committee uh, kind of come up with. And uh, basically everything was kind of we don't need this service right now, except for maybe having them come out and look at our operations, see how it's... So if that's okay with you guys, I'll go ahead and make that contact and see what that involves. Might it could cost us nothing to do it. Yeah, that's just it. I don't know if it's... Because well, we're a member of the KAC, mm -hmm. and I don't know if they do it for members at no cost or if there's minimal cost. I, I, don't, I just don't know. Probably pay mileage. Yeah, probably something like that. Okay, so that's all I had there. If anything, let them drive out here and see how far it is out here. Maybe they have moved meetings from Wichita to A's. <laughs> well, the last few commissioner meetings have been at Overland Park. I mean, it's like his meeting. Why couldn't they have it in A's? Yeah. I mean, For the transportation? Yeah, and that's well, that one meeting here. Yeah. You said you're going to Wichita. Oh, but, well, last year was in Manhattan, so. Yeah, but still. I know. You've got 105 counties. You could be in the middle. I don't think either one of those fit us. But. I think for everybody in the eastern half of the state, they think he's in the middle of the line. Shoot, I know guys that think they that. They don't even know we exist. Yeah, I know guys that think that Western Kansas is Lawrence.
it's supposed to be on the board. Okay. Okay. We have a strategic planning committee for a meeting. All we come up with is we have to hire more people for the county. What a great meeting. Dan, you're up. That was too quick. <laughs> First off, I'd like to get some LED light bars for Bird City. This is a quote from Anders. We got them on our trucks. They don't have anything on their trucks. What do you mean now? They don't have anything like that. Yeah. yeah, a couple pole lights, but that's it. Pretty good light, four thousand dollars. Should have. Okay. Should have like capital outlay. We should be good for a while. Okay. Do I hear a motion to go ahead and approve the purchase of uh, some uh, light bars and light uh, light bar mounts for the Bird City Fire Department at the cost of two thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. Go ahead. Here's so over here. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Wouldn't it be cheaper if we just didn't respond to night fighters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wait, yeah till you need a lot wait till morning. You know, there's a lot of light out there with the fire. <laughs> yeah. You just shouldn't need a light. You can just go to where it's glowing. Spray the water where the fire is at. You can see it. Has anybody yeah. called you cheap before? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> we can. And then I want to, I want to apply for the forestry grant again. Okay. I think we've bought radios the last three years with it, and should be good with radios for a while. I might try to reimburse on these lights we're getting now. Do some of that kind of stuff. Okay. I say go ahead and do that. Well, no, I'm not sure how. Yeah, it has changed. No. Well, I don't need to read it then. I know. Never changes. It's the same every year. Well, that's why I asked. I didn't want Other to than the guy's know. name that's on there, he retired after they sent out the packet. So. Yeah, go ahead and make that application. I don't know what our policy is on this. I know they're doing a pay thing. I don't want pay. So what, if, if you did, if you did, successful in this grant application and it's yeah. something you do on your time, it's going to be. Uh, We'll reimburse you three percent of whatever the grant was worth. I don't really want it, but just FYI. <laughs> okay, well, you can work that out with Scott. Okay. I didn't know if the policy said we that, have to. No, you okay. have to. That's okay. up to you. That's totally up to you. Okay. I was hoping Ryan would make it in here. This is right now. He's one of them putting off. Okay, we're t Ryan and I got together and was talking about doing a like a burn permit. Sherman sure County does a similar thing. You get cut. You want to give them a copy? Mm -hmm. I get cut. Too. Now this is this is during a, a burn ban, an official burn ban, or is this no. every time that they want? Every time they want to burn, they do this. But what it does, if I'm correct. If there is a red flag warning, we don't necessarily have to have a burn ban. We can tell them no because it's right here in black and white. 
says. Okay, say that again. So even if we're not under a burn ban, if it's a red flag day, we right. can say no. Exactly. So where we're at currently is we either have a burn ban or we don't. Right. So if there's not a burn ban in place, they call, they say, hey, I'm going to light my CRP on fire. Even if we're in a red flag, we don't have the authority to tell them no. If we're not in a right. burn ban. Because okay. right now, the way it is, we're either not or we are. Does that make sense? So, I mean, like today, we'd be in a red flag day. Well, we're, we're in a burn, burn ban, ban right now. If we didn't have a burn ban, we'd right. be in a red flag exactly. day. Yeah. So, what this does then is basically you have this resolution that is a burn permit system. Dan can set the requirements for, like, when they call in, if the winds are over 20 mile an hour, if we're in a red flag, if it's too dry, whatever. Or Dan can just call dispatch and say, hey, there's no burning today. So when people call in, they can look, be told no. So this is a day-to-day -day type of event? Mm -hmm. It does not limit, like, campfires, you know, stuff like that, um, grills, fire pits. You know, somebody's camping, they can still light a campfire. That's why you put the burn ban in place then. That means absolutely no burn. Burn bans technically are a state of emergency. We really should be renewing those every seven days. Um, but part of what we're up against, you know, it gets dry. We, You guys have a meeting twice a month. You put a burn ban in. Sometimes then, four days later, it snows. Well, people are calling wanting to burn. We're still under a burn ban. We can't allow them to, even though it would be fine. Do you get one until it's rescinded? We fully understand. because This got would basically give some authority to the fire department to be saying no even though we're not under a burn ban and then we wouldn't have to be doing this burn ban back and forth as often as we're doing does that make yes <clears throat> okay so we've had with Shannon County being one of the high moisture spots in the Kansas mm -hmm. we've had a lot of people that want to burn right even though we're under a burn ban the standard answer is pretty much no, correct? There's no way to rescind that on a day-to-day -day basis. If you rescind it, then it's... We open it up and yes. we can't tell them no. See, we really don't want to do that yet. I mean, we don't have enough moisture around there. Right. And that's but, what, but if we had this in place, you could. We wouldn't need we Other could. than a burn ban. Other than, yeah, as long as we didn't have a burn ban, we had this in place, we could still tell them no. If they call in on a red flag day, we can say no. But that didn't give it, give us any. But then, if it gets to the extreme, you could do it, correct? Yeah. 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 But it doesn't give us any recourse, really. Though, if let's say you would say no, and they go ahead and burn. I think oh no! Yeah, it's it's done, yeah. Okay, I just <laughs> actually they and they I'm not saying we don't truck. right. So in Sherman County, they have this cost of equipment. So if somebody violates the burn permit. They charge them, like for each brush truck, $500 an hour. Uh, each fireman, $26 an hour. That's what then gets billed to the person <coughs> if they went in and burned after they were told no. So, and it would get out of control. So are you leaning towards this rather than a burn ban? Is that kind of feeling I'm getting here or no? No, this would prevent us from doing burn bans as frequently as we are. Because there are weeks where it's just one day out of the week they probably shouldn't be burning. So right. instead of going through the process of doing a burn ban, he could just tell them no burning today. Okay, so you're either going to have to have one or the other. You're going to have to have a resolution that mirrors what, or similar to what the other counties have in place. So basically this resolution, correct me if I'm wrong, listen, would be in place <laughs> like all the time. Right. If things got really extreme where we didn't want him doing campfires, anything, so if you would enact your recommendations, a burn ban. Okay, I'm with you. Now. And then when we receive the burn ban, we go this back is still to this. Power. Mm -hmm. Does that? Right. Okay. Right. This would just be if, if it's a calm day, people could burn. If the, if the next day it's 30 mile hour winds, then it'll And we even had that here a while back. You know, we had the 12 inches of snow. Right which you could have burned for three or four days, but then once that snow started melting, it may have been mud underneath, the grass was dry, it still would have burned, even though, so that would be a call up to Dan whether we want to burn or not. Have you had a chance to look this over at all? No, no, but I trust what Brian is, is saying to the commissioners, and Dan for that matter too, 
um, in that, you know, this is basically what we were alluding to earlier, is how can we allow burning if there is a burn ban. This is the, the solution, okay. meaning that we, you know, if the burn ban is not in place, then this is what's in place. And so you can still restrict burning based on certain circumstances and conditions. <coughs> so, so really all you need is a decision from us to go ahead and move forward with putting together a resolution that fits Correct. Cheyenne County. Yeah, because yeah, I would recommend that. I'm not saying that everything is in Right. I think we review it but and between, make it tailored to our county. Between everybody, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. If we're going to do it, and I have no problem, we've got to really educate people so they're not mad. Yes. Right. Because they're going to read this and they're going to go, what the heck? And then <coughs> make sure you call 911. You, well, it's a dispatch. 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 Make sure that the dispatchers say, no, you can't burn today. Check with us tomorrow. You know what I mean? We gotta, we gotta educate them because well, they're gonna call. Them, Why can't I burn? Right. And then so gonna, you're exactly right. Yeah. It sounds like we'll call, right. call tomorrow if the wind's down. You're gonna be able to burn. Right. You know, and then once they get it all figured out, then it's good. So there's gonna have to be a really good line of communications between there, you guys and the dispatch. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then. You know, like in Sherman County, you know, it says they they go to the fire chiefs. Well, they have a full time, so we'll have to look at where you want them to go to get the permit. And <coughs> we talked about maybe they just go to the sheriff's office dispatch to get that because it's always manned. Have you included yeah, Cody in these discussions? Yeah. Okay. Um, because then the permit, as you'll see in there, I included of what the permit looks like when they or the application. Yeah. It kind of outlines too what we expect of them, you know, about don't leave it unattended. You can't just go like CRP and leave, you know. Well, I can see Roger's point that you have somebody that wants to burn their trash, which they've been doing for 25 years, right. they're not going to want to stop and call in and get And that's kind of what we may not want to have trash included in it. We may or may not. I mean, that's why I say we tailor it to our county. But what this is really geared towards is if you're going to go burn a quarter of CRP, it gives them the ability to say, not today, wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Whereas right now, we don't have that. I think that's a good idea. And then the burn ban does come into place sometimes because the federal government sometimes is requiring people to burn. And so then when we put those burn bans in place, they can no longer require that. that. Okay, that was another question that was brought up. If we are under an active burn ban, mm -hmm. CRP burns, everything is out, correct, for this county? And our authority supersedes whatever the feds say you need to do, basically. Yes, my do the feds give an extension? That they should be, then. And that's why it says in here, Sherman County, Kansas is the county municipal government with the power of home rule, pursuant KSA 19-101. That's yeah, where that... They're using home rule. That's where they're... There's some the state now still. What's that? There's some of the state laws. Well, I trust that you guys can work out the details and, and the legal aspects of it. So, uh, do we hear a motion to go ahead and uh, approve the pursuant of a resolution to address uh -huh. burn bans? So moved. Aye. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so you can go ahead and move forward with that. Okay. Yep. That's all I had. Unless you guys have so. Thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So, well, do we have to call special meetings to do that? Yes. And so then we have, to, uh, say for instance, this contractor, we get some snow or something Sunday, like we're talking, or Monday, and this contractor wants to burn. Are we going to have to wait two more weeks before you meet again? You're there to call a special meeting. Because he's just waiting for us to get this release so he can go to work. Well, you can understand what well, we we just can't overturn this burn ban because of an individual. We're just not going to do that. I, I know. What I was what I was wondering is yet do we have to wait for? Can you call a special meeting for to release the burn ban? Is what I wonder. Yes, we could. That is and we have done that in the past. Yes. Okay. So when we've got snow, then yes, we notify it, and they just call a special meeting to rescind the burn ban. Well, actually, I think yes, yes, yes. Is that? That's how it's supposed to be done. And can right. that be done by phone? 
Do they actually have to visit them? We have done that in the past. We have, we've done it by phone and then backed up. We just signed one this time and backdated it. And I don't know how kosher that is, but I can tell by the look on her face, not very. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and, and kind of the it, reason it for doing be, this way. You know, it'd be great if we met every Monday, or right. but, but we don't. We meet twice a month, so it's, it's hard to do business. Well, that's kind of the reason Ryan and I talked about yes, this. Yes, that would because, relieve some of that headache. Yeah. Right. Instead of email on Saturday morning or something, trying to catch you and me yeah. and him. And <laughs> yeah. And on the flip side of, you know, trying to get the burn bands in place when it's, yeah. you know, they're talking 70 mile an hour winds on a weekend, that's hard to get it in place, yeah. so. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks. Sure. The only thing I have for you gentlemen is the annual signing of the memorandum of understanding with Bird City for a contract. Um, the reason I brought in this year is Bird City changed a few things, um, nothing nothing huge. Uh, the old one said that we were pro to provide a deputy in that was specifically for Bird City. That's all that deputy did. Well, that's kind of not very cost effective and, and doesn't give us the coverage we want. So they, they changed it um, in item one. I don't know if you guys got a copy or not. I emailed out. I have no. Well, I'll get your email. Copy okay. Yes. okay. So... Um, like I said, it used to say that there would be a deputy provided to Bird City exclusively for Bird City. And now it just says uh, we'll provide law enforcement in the city on a full-time basis, day and night. That is, a law enforcement uh, officer shall be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for law enforcement. Um, doesn't say there's one specifically. And it says, but law enforcement is not required to have an officer patrol at all hours. So kind of change that one up. Um, the other than that, there's not really a whole lot of changes. We took out some things that uh, had to do with the office there at City Hall. They had to provide us an office at City Hall, things like that, and we're working on a different memorandum of understanding coming forth on the new building of how those costs are going to be shared. Um, they gave me a city councilman that I'm supposed to be working with. We get some things lined up, and then uh, we'll bring it to both the Board of Commissioners and City Council. And, we go for approval. So the the items over the, the office have been removed because that's we're just going to do a completely separate one since we're not going to be in a city building anymore. Okay. So that's the that's the changes. Um, if you guys approve it, we'll need to need to. Uh, um, do you have to do a resolution to approve it, or do they just approve it and sign it? How do you guys do that? But anyways, I think there any, any questions or anything. I think Leslie needs to look over that before. Yeah, yeah, I just got it yesterday. Yeah, they just got it to me. I had to go over to City Hall and say, I was told I was supposed to get this. So, <laughs> exactly. So they, as soon as I got it, I I sat there in City Hall and forwarded it off to her. If we want to if we want to wait until Leslie has a chance to look at it and sign it next I, meeting, we can do that. I would feel more comfortable doing that. Okay. Not that I feel there's anything wrong with it, but... We're we're trying hard to to get things back into the proper yeah I understand way of doing things so so yeah if you want to do that let's let Leslie look it over and, okay and uh, I'm sure that we'll work out the agreement with Bird City and yeah oh the other thing is there is an increase in the price that we're now at thirty eight thousand four hundred annually so what were you what was it before I believe thirty five so. What, uh, what they're trying to do is give a, uh, a percentage increase every year when they do their budget. They increase it by a certain percentage, whatever works in the budget, so that we're not going in every five years and wanting to increase it by a large amount every couple of years. Well, so, and we've covered just, most of the stipulations. Uh, yeah. Even though you don't have to have one living there, we obviously do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, okay. so, I'll let you guys... Uh, Work with Leslie and make sure it's a good contract, and we'll sign it and take it back. So, That's good. Thank you, yes. All right, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have more business?
affidavit in front of the commissioners? The only thing I have is executive session. I'd like to call executive or ask for executive session for five minutes uh, security. Okay. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. So we'll have five minutes of executive session for you got all security. Okay. You're, not, you're not planning on making a decision? No. No. Okay. Can you wait just a minute for us to stand? 